Shabbat Shalom to you. Uh, we are getting now to this special parasha. It's called Bechaloteha. And, and this is a, a very special uh, parasha in, in many ways. Because looks like the, the, we are going to uh, the process of finally we have dedicated the Mishkan, we have inaugurated, and all the people have come through it, all the 12 tribes that have been the division, order, and everything that the Torah is telling us, informing us about Israel as a people. You need to remember something about Israel. Israel just, this is the second year of after they left Egypt, you know? And many people think in two years you're going to change. Uh, and takes the whole life to change. Also, you, uh, I hope that you have been aware that have been teaching right now since uh, almost uh, now 10 years about paradigm shift and how difficult has been the paradigm to shift, you know? Um, some of us were still struggling because the past is so strong in us that doesn't allow us to think outside the box. Well, you uh, have that experience sometimes, that you have learned one way, and, and that sometimes you are directed in a different way to think in different way, or at least to have open mind, and you sometimes refuse to, to look it from the other perspective because you are accustomed to your ways. Well, you know, now you need to see Israel from that perspective, you know? Uh, I, there is a saying that it's very difficult to teach to an old dog tricks, new tricks. New tricks. You know, you cannot teach them. They already are uh, comfortable with their situation and they don't want to learn anymore. Um, I, I believe in, in the blessed memory of my own father that he used to say to me, son, when you stop learning, you start dying. And you know, and this always, we need to be constantly searching and looking and growing. This parasha is going to be like a reverse of the, the way that we were going. At the beginning, we're going to see uh, the start with the uh, going up to, to light on the menorah. The way that is, is, is written in the Hebrew, sometimes give you a, a maybe a, a, a wrong idea and the, the translation is go and to light the menorah but really what it means is go up a sin and then light the menorah and here is a beautiful picture that they are going to come as you know I have been talking to you about the, the Hebrew language is a pictorial language and it's a language I speak through pictures more than through concepts and show you something that you need to uh, close your eyes and to imagine and, and then go through that area of imagination and that will help you to understand even better. When you become so literal, sometimes you lose one of the most beautiful uh, teachings and principles of the Torah. And the Torah tries to give you something more than only the mere letter. And you know how you hear that statement, the letter alone kills you. You know, you need to go beyond the letter. You need to go to, to see the essence that the, the, the scripture is giving through the principles. You know, we can become very rigid in our understanding. And we, we can become very uh, uh, legalistic. And we can become very uh, 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 obtuse in our, in, in our understanding, you know, narrow-minded. And this is what makes us sometimes suffer because we become almost like uh, fanatics and we do not have even size to grow, you know? This is the way and that I don't change. You know, some, some one person said one day to me, I won't change uh, or I will change over my dead body, you know? And, uh, I don't surrender. And those people, they have a very difficult life. Because more, more uh, hard-head you are, okay, yeah, more difficult for you to allow the, the creator talk to you. 
You know, Israel had a term that was used in, in the scripture by their creator, Keshech Oref, you know? And that means a stiff neck, you know? Somebody is my way or no way. Um, we need to go a little bit beyond about our basic beliefs. You know, uh, how many times I have been trying to teach you that it's not the religion who make you better, it's your relationship with the Creator. But amongst us, us, we catapult religion. We fight because of religion. We destroy because of religion. We kill each other because of religion. My religion is better than your religion. Saint, Saint many times is talk about that. And you know, and they talk, my God is better than your God. And I always say to people, there is only one God. Blessed be his name. You know? And, and then I say, which side of your God is your God? You know? Um, oh. But the truth of the matter is that then when you get a little bit more serious in your understanding, you're going to see that there are many people that they follow gods that have been invented. What I call it, human gods. Gods made by the imagination of people more than what the revelation of the creator is. And we put certain things there, and then we make it look to look like we, we give you a package, and we deliver you a package, you know? And, 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 and what I do is I put you in a box. And you are going to be very comfortable because we are people of comfort, you know? And many of us, we do, not, we do not like to be moved our chair, you know? How many of you that come into this community, you have already your chair, you know? And nobody move you from your chair, you know? And you see somebody comes into your chair, you give it a mean look, even if it's somebody who is a new person. Why is my chair? You know, I remember uh, several people that used to be saying, this is my place, you know? And this is the way that we are. And we are very difficult to accept or to be molded by other ideas or to be flexible to trying to understand. Doesn't mean to be wishy-washy. What it means is that you are constantly searching and looking for what is true. You cannot put our creator you cannot put our God in a box. And most of, the, most of the religions, what they do is put our creator in a box, and they define him, you know? Like we as human beings, we have the capability to define him. And that's when we fall in the trap. We fall in the trap because my God is this and this and this and this. And, and my God is not like this, like this and like that, you know? I always say, don't ever say, my God wouldn't do that. Only with that expression, what you are saying it is that our God is limited. He is beyond all of us, and we cannot limit him. We know what a, he is because we have an understanding and rele, re, uh, revelation. But we need to be careful about our statement sometimes of pride that I am better than the others. We are not. It's our creator who is the one that has given us the light and understanding. When the menorah give us this picture, the picture that we, we need to ascend to, to, to light the, the, this, this uh, menorah. To light the, uh, the menorah is to point to light to the Torah. Inside of the Mishkan, you have is a tent, and the tent is very dark. There is nothing inside. There are no <laughs> windows, you know? And when everything is closed, how can you see anything inside? The menorah has a purpose, and the purpose, a practical purpose is to illuminate. But it goes beyond the illumination only in the physical term. But it goes in the idea of the illumination that is going to point it out to the Aaron, to, to they're going to point it out to the Torah, they're going to point it out to the God's revelation. And it's going to give us a, this picture. The picture it is that in darkness is God's word that brings us light when we, when we cannot see, he gives us the vision to see. 
And this light is not only for Israel in the sense of many, many times they have been taught wrongly. But uh, the Torah was given to Israel, not in order to be the keeper of the Torah and, 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 and to hold it for themselves, but it was to distribute it, to give it to the rest of the world. And that, sadly enough, we have done a very sad job about that. Because we have been even teaching that the Torah is only for us, not for them. And that is a big mistake, that is still we are paying for it. You know, I am glad that our Messiah Yeshua brought the light, not only to his people, but because of, of what he did, has brought the light to the rest of the world. That they have taken the right way or the wrong way, that's a totally different uh, thing to say. But that was what he did. He brought the Torah and, and to his people back. Because at the time of Yeshua, they were not following Torah. They were following men. You know, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Hanabi, the prophet, how many times he say, you know, cursed be the man who trusts in men, but blessed be the man who trust in the Creator, in God. Um, we are going to see that here the light of the menorah represent to give us light to all of us and to give us light in the most darkest places and to illuminate and to see the presence of the Creator. Then the, we call, uh, in this parasha, there are several uh, areas that we, we can see. Ne next to this, uh, I count in the Levine giving a, a uh, making the Levine finally part of the tribes of Israel, uh, uh, making a, a, a special uh, pronunci uh, pronunciation for, for the Levine, you know, that they are a special tribe and they're going to serve the Lord in a special way, and they do a special uh, korbanot or offerings for them, ole and hata. Then it's talking about the second Pesach, or Pesach uh, Sheni, in which for those ones who were not able to keep Pesach, they can do it the, the, next, month, the next month at the same time. That means on the 15th of Iyar. Suddenly, comes something that's totally outside the what we can call the norm. There is a, is a situation of excitement. Finally, Israel has finished, has inaugurated the Mishkan, the temple. Uh, they have prepared, they have been two years already under the, and the, 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 uh, the, the Mount Sinai or Har Sinai, and, and, um, and they are ready to depart, to go to finally to the Promised Land, the second year. On uh, Iyar 20, they were going to depart, all in the order that the Creator has given to the camp of Israel. They were ready to depart. In that process, the excitement that we finally, we are going to arrive to the promise of the Creator that he gave us at the beginning in Shemot with Moshe Rabbeinu, that he was going to deliver us, he was going not only to free us, uh, he was going to redeem us, and he was going to show us the promised land, that he was going to give us the promised land where we were going to, after we worship him at the Har Sinai, at the, the mountain, where we receive the Torah, the Ten Commandments. They're ready to leave, and the people of nowhere start complaining. Complaining about food. Like uh, they could complain about anything. Else. That was not the, the first time that they were complaining about that. Before they, they arrived to Har, Har Sinai, they, they did it. If you remember, they start complaining that we left Egypt and we, we are missing this. They had just left and they were already missing everything. You know? Now they are missing, not only they are missing the beautiful vegetables and the onions and the, and, and the melons and the, and, and, and the garlic and, and the, the, all these wonderful things that, that, that you, 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 you have there, but also they were missing the meat. 
we don't have meat to eat. You will ask that totally true? No. They have their own uh, cattle. They were taken there, and they had their, uh, their offerings and the service, the korbanot, and they, w they will eat, and they, will, they have to eat better. They didn't want to eat the, their own, you know? And they were, that was very unfair that they were not being fed the way. And this man, or mana, that was given to us, what is that? We are tired of eating that. Well, they were tired for 40 years. They, they were going to be tired to be eating that. And the Creator gives to them a lot of meat. Meat that came out, out of the nose, you know? A lot of quails. And, that, and you see here this desire that it is beyond na uh, natural things. You know, these people that they cannot dominate their own needs, their own situation. This is the, like there was a totally, a totally uh, a conflict of, of themselves. You know, they, they couldn't uh, dominate their own passions, if we put it in that way. They, they devoured the meat like uh, they were crazy. And they had a big problem. And the Creator punished them. There were many deaths. And there was, uh, they needed to stop that uh, epidemic. Moses Rabenu talks. And then here, Rabenu in chapter 10, it's very interesting what he said to, to, to the Creator. Basically, I had it. It's too much for me. I cannot take it anymore. And he said, what I have done, what is the problem with me? I cannot take it anymore. And, uh, and basically what he say, I had it. I am not able to lead these people. And they say, why you have done something so bad to me? It's Moshe Rabenu complaining to the Creator. Look at the relationship that he had with him. They were like friends. Why you have done something so ill to me? You know? These people, are, am I their mothers? I gave birth to them? I need to nourish them? I cannot do that. It's impossible for me. Please, if you really care for me, take my life. I cannot take it anymore. He had it. He couldn't do it anymore. The question is here, what happened with Moshe Rabenu? What happened with his leadership? He was the center of the leadership. He was able to take all these people out of Egypt. He went through very difficult times. Before he complained him, at the beginning, you remember when he go to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh responded uh, harder and punished the people of, of Israel and, and the people of Israel come and complain to him, please shut your mouth because look at, you are bringing worse things to us. And, and he goes back to the creator and says, why do you do that to me? You know, you tell me to go to talk and then it's worse. And, and, then, and then the Creator explained to him, I am doing this for a reason, to show my power in front of Pharaoh. And also the, the Israelites can see who he really is. But at this time, they already went on their way. They, they didn't have anybody behind them. They were not running away from anybody. And they start complaining. And Moshe Rabenu couldn't take it anymore. You know, being a leader is a very difficult <coughs> position. Because a true leader is not looking for acceptance of the people. A good leader is looking to do what is right for the people. And sometimes what is right for the people, not necessarily the most popular thing. And. Uh, no, it's not that the leader doesn't want to be liked by his people. Totally the contrary. That will be the greatest thing. But that's when I said the difference between a true leader and a politician. A politician is going to try to promise you 
anything that you want to hear, only for one reason. Uh, because they want your vote. And when they get your vote, they say to you, good luck, goodbye, because they're going to do whatever they want to do. But a Moshe Rabbeinu was not that. Moshe Rabbeinu will tell you what he needs to tell you, because he was receiving a direct communication from the Creator. And these people, instead to look like to understand that they already knew what he was doing, they, they were the excitement to, be to, to go to the Promised Land, they were still like a babies. And this generation was not going to grow up. It's very difficult to take out of the mind of the people that already has made their mind. I believe that you need only a miracle from the heights to be able to change. You know, I, I have dealt with a lot of people who they call missionaries and they call that, that they are going to convert people. And they think that they have the power to convert. You don't have the power to convert. The only one that can change you is the creator. You know? And, uh, but uh, what sometimes these people that they try to convert you, what they do? They, they tell you two sides. One, it is that everything is going to be honky-dory and beautiful and beautiful, uh, and, uh, and you're going to be flying in heaven on the skies, you know? And that you're going to enjoy the, the, the most beautiful things. And in certain religions, even they give you a, a lot of women. You're a man, a lot of women for you. And all of them virgin. I don't know. The virgin has a better position than the other. But that's how they, they see it, you know? And, and, and you're going to be blessed by that. And, even, and these religions are the religions for after, you know? If, when you are dead. But the Torah talks for today, for right now, how you live now. It is not how you want to live in, in the other world. The Torah is always talking to you. Our God is the God of now. Because our God, for our God there is no time. There is no past, present, or future. Our God is the God of now. And it's now when you need to act. The other thing is that about that if they cannot convince you by the goodness that you're going to receive, you go to that religion, they're going to put a lot of fear on you. Fear of hell, fear of destruction, fear of this, fear of that. You know, if you don't do what I'm telling you to do, you are going to go to hell. You are going to be dead. You are going to suffer. You're going to do this. You're going, you know, and they put a lot of fear. And many people, what they do is make decisions based on those situations instead to look about what the Creator is teaching us. Well, Moshe Rabenu had this time with his people. The people of Israel saw him from the beginning and what the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was capable to do. They saw the anan, the cloud. They saw the edge, the fire. They were walking with it. There was no, nothing that they couldn't see. The, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the world, the only one God, blessed be him. He was the only one true God. And he was walking with the people of Israel. They could see him. They could experience him. He could, they could be with him. And what did they do? Complaining and complaining and complaining. That took from our great teacher, Moshe Rabenu, everything that he could take. And finally, he literally gave up. I cannot do it anymore. And that was only the second year. And he's going to have other 38 years to go with him. What the Creator does is say, I'm going to diminish the burden on you. He didn't say, I'm going to take away the burden from you. What he says, I'm going to diminish this burden from you. 
Select 70 of your elders and take it to the Ohel Moeda. They are going to receive a portion of your, the spirit that has given to you, a spirit of leadership. And Moshe Rabbeinu takes them, the 70, and suddenly the 70 start prophesying. But uh, there are two characters, Eldad and Maidad that they were supposedly, they were not among the 70, and they were outside the camp, and they received also this gift of prophecy. And they start prophesying. And lo and behold, Yehoshua, the very loyal uh, servant of Moshe Rabbeinu, went to, to him, very upset, and he said to Moshe Rabenu, look, uh, these two are prophesying in your name, they have not been given the right to do that. Let's kill him, they stop them. Sometimes fanatism and religion, sometimes is also part of the problem. What Moshe Rabenu say? Let it then prophesy. Let him then speak. How much I wish that all Israel will be people of prophets. Because you cannot hold the word of God and you cannot hold God. You cannot put God in a box. Nobody has the property of the Creator. As many religious think they, they own God. You cannot own God. God owns us, no vice versa. And here, if you're going to see the picture of finally, he is going to take a, a time. But uh, the people of Israel continue doing wrong. And they suffer because of the, of the, of the, of the uh, disobedience and because of the behavior. Looks like that they, they were totally very childish. They go, they, 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 they see the consequences, but uh, instead to say, you know what, now I learn it. No, they keep doing it. I say to you, there is a reason why the Torah calls Israel Keshech Oref. Because this stiff neck, stiff neck means that you cannot learn. Even that you see in there in front of you, you are so stuck up. We were not the most dedicated people as many times we trying to, to tell everybody. And that generation, little by little, was becoming generation that was not going to go to the promised land. Later on, we are going to see not only the case of the spies, or the, the one that they went to uh, uh, look at the land, you know, but we are going to see that these explorers, how they fail, and because of that failure, they are going to uh, uh, be the last generation, that, that the generation that was not going to enter in the promised land. I, ne I need to tell you, I'm going to speak then later on in the other, uh, in this chapter, in the next parasha, but uh, I would like to only to bring you to you this idea. How many of us maybe we have blocked ourselves to the point that we are not going to be able to see the next step. Because we are so stuck up, so stiff in our ways, that we are not allowing the Creator to work in our lives. And we do not, we do not want to be flexible. We do not want to let Him to mold us and to change us for the better. In my way, and no way, Jose. You know, no other way. And 
this is a, this is a, the, the, how the, the Torah teaches about ourselves. Then uh, you're going to see in, in this parashat that not only that, but uh, comes at the end, in chapter 12, even to me, um, a harder problem. Because that comes now in the family, inside the family. You're going to see the situation between Miriam and Aaron talking against his brother, Moshe. And basically, there are many understandings about this, that the rabbis, they talk about this, are saying, they're trying to mention sometimes, some they are very critical about Miriam, there are some they are very nice about Miriam. Um, the only one that sometimes calls my attention is Aaron. She has gone through the Egel Sahab, Egel Sahab, the golden calf. She has gone now through uh, speaking against uh, his own brother being part of, of with Miriam, talking against his brother. And everybody's punished, so, uh, looks like, and he's the only one that goes free. I don't think he goes free. I think he suffered consequences. But at his position as Hagadol Kohen, as a high priest, gives him a position and a situation that our Creator did with him directly. But something happened about talking against a leader. You know, in the Psalms say, don't, don't touch my anointed one that is talking about King David. But here we can see it, uh, this same idea. Don't mess with somebody who is special before God. And if you have something to do or to say, say it in front. Don't talk on the back. And, and we talk about Lashon Hara, you know, the evil tongue. And that is so destructive. And we say that the world has been destroyed by two things, by this Lashon Hara and by the Sinachinam, you know, the free uh, uh, hate that we, uh, we have among each other. You see today what is happening in the world. Look at how everybody is against almost everybody. How you see that even in, in, in the same nation, the same religion people, they're killing among each other. Because one is from one side and the other from the other side. And you're going to see other people that looks like that because they want to be nice. They are almost paralyzed and they don't have even the capability to act. It's almost that they are paralyzed. We see in politics, we see right now in the in, in United States with this new president. I always ask myself, okay, he was elected. Why they don't let him to be president now? Almost all the media want to destroy this man. And I say, you don't need to destroy it. His worst enemy is his own mouth. You know, let him be. And then you're going to see the situation. But no, it is nobody happy with anything. Everybody is divided. Go to the Middle East. And you ask yourself, which is the right group? Who are the, who are the good and who are the bad? And it's almost impossible to know. As a Jew, to me, Israel is the center of my, my concern. But also, we need to see Israel with, with open eyes. There are people that think that Israel cannot do anything wrong. Totally the contrary. One thing that I like about Israel is when Israel does something wrong, admit it. 
and trying to solve it. It's the only country that I know that is doing that. All the other countries are trying to cover up. And Israel is under the, the eyes of the world. And they need to come out better than anybody else. They are not perfect. But at the same time, they are learning through the process. Then go, going back to Miriam and Aaron. Why that envy? Miriam say, we are not also prophets. We know also we prophesy. And then our creator comes to, 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 to her and to Aaron, and he talks to them. He brings them, you know, and say, I need to talk to you. And how is he going to talk to, to them? I want to tell you something about Moshe Raven. And this is something that is in my eyes constantly, because it's the most beautiful example. He say in verse six, please listen in, in chapter 12, verse six. After he calls them to talk to Miriam, they has talked against him. Said, Please listen carefully to my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, I will make myself known to them and I will let them know in dreams. But with Moshe, it's totally different. He served me in every way in my house, and, and he is faithful. And he say, when I speak to him, I speak face to face or mouth to mouth, OK? And then you do not have the right to talk against him. No. Moshe Rabenu, in verse 3, say a following Behaish Moshe, Anav, Meod, Mikol Hadam, Masher, Al Penei Hadamah. The main Moshe, he is the most humble person in the whole earth. You know, there are two sides about hu humans. One side is modesty, and the other side is pride. <coughs> You know, when you're modest, you are constructive. When you have pride, you are destructive. And we are constantly battling among these things. When you need to show off and you need to tell people who you are and you need to, to prove that who you are, you already lost it. The great men in the history, one of the distinctions of them is being humble. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Who am I? The one that needs to prove already has disproved himself. And how many of us, we are so strong in the idea that I need to be better than others, or I need to show you how capable I am. You don't need to show anybody. You need to be yourself. By your own behavior, you're going to know 
who you are. And you are going to cause a lot of envy to others. Another person that came to my memory was like that, our Messiah Yeshua. Very humble. Never he imposed himself to anybody. That what all the people in the rest and the other religion have made of him is totally different. But uh, what he really was, a great rabbi, very modest, and taught, but never ever he put himself in a pedestal, as they have been trying to put him. We are in times right now that the, the idolatry to the personality is very strong. We are making heroes of anything. You will be surprised which are our heroes today. In the arts, in the music, in the sports, in politics. And they lack of any characteristic of being humble. <coughs> totally the contrary. They are show off. They're the heroes of today. And the Torah teaches totally the contrary. The person you know how much he talks. The true person is how he is and how he walks. It is not so much to make a, a something special about yourself. Let other people talk about you. You don't need to talk about yourself. Let other people see in you the qualities that the Creator has given to you. Don't try to pay money to better your image. By the way, that's very popular now among politicians and people in, in sports or any other area. No? They, now they are, they are special firms special companies, that they make your image to look better. And we are in a totally different world. We need to be ourselves. Moshe Rabbeinu lost his desire to lead a people that they were not ready to change. I has been so many years right now, like I told you, 10 years, about paradigm shift. And has been in a struggle after a struggle after a struggle. There is more condemnation than openness. There is more self-righteousness uh, uh, than being uh, to see the truth. There is an attitude, I am right and you are wrong. Is the attitude of uh, that I am the one that has everything right and you have everything wrong. Why? Because this is the way. How many times I have heard people saying to me, are you going to tell me that my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather were wrong and you are only right? You are the only one that's right. How many times I have heard the same thing the, uh, are you going to tell me that these people that have been so many, many centuries and thousands of years teaching this, is, is, uh, they're wrong, and you, now, you're right. And the problem is that it's not that I am right, because the only one that's right is the Creator. I was wrong, and I can be wrong again. Why? Because I am human but I am looking for him constantly. And this is what we need to do with Moshe Ravenu, 
when he's saying, I cannot take it anymore. What he was saying is, there is no hope for these people. They do not want to change. They love the status quo. They love this in the way that they are. And change is one of the most difficult things in all of us as human beings. Because sometimes it goes against our own nature. Because there is, there is an effort that you need to make. Because to walk with God is not easy. Because you are in constant decision making. If somebody tell you that the only thing that you need to do is to believe and everything is honky dory, they are liars. Totally the contrary. When you really find the creator, when you really find God, that is when the real question comes. That is when the times of test comes. When you are constantly being checked. Because finally your conscience is alive, not dormant. Are we being questioned? Are you being checked? Are you struggling right now in your own life? Oh, everything is okay. You know, life is wonderful. But every day has their own things. And I told you that our God is the God of now. It's not the God of yesterday. I know the God of tomorrow. It's the God of now. Because for him there is no past, present, or future. He is now. He's there. It's how you live today when I make the difference. The next day is going to be now again. And you need to start again. There is a constant challenge to all of us. You know, let's call it only conscience. But as you and I, we have conscience. It's already very difficult to live. Why? Because we need to make decisions. You go to a store, and there is something there. Nobody see it. Sometimes people have the temptation to take it. I see something on the floor that doesn't belong to me. Check it, pick it up. My conscience goes away. What's wrong with that? And other things in our private life. Nobody sees me. No? Oh, yeah. When you have a, a creator, I say, when the creator is in you, you cannot hide. You are being looked, and you know that. Then act accordingly. Are you going to fail? Are we going to fail? Yes. I wish to tell you that we're going to be perfect. As certain people teach you, you know, you, the only thing that you need to do is to be perfect. Moshe Rabenu knew. He was, not only he knew that he was not perfect, but he knew that the people of Israel were not perfect. And he tried his best. Let me ask you this question. Did he lose his temper? Did he, did he get upset? Did he complain to the creator? <laughs> no, many times. Did he beg to the creator? Here in the final, at the end, uh, with, with his sister, look, he intervenes. And he say to the creator, please, don't let she be like a, a cadaver, you know, be a dead body. Heal her. Heal her.
the love for his sister. And he knew that his sister was talking against him. Let me ask you this question. He was more humane than our creator? He had more the spirit of forgiveness than our creator? Sometimes what we do not look is about, and we don't see it sometimes, it's about the consequences of our behavior And our Creator always is ready to forgive us. But what is the step? It is about acknowledging, not running away from it, acknowledging. Miriam stayed for a while, and all the people of Israel wait for her. Do you think that she learned her lesson? Have you ever done something that has cost you something and later on, because of what you went through, now you are a better person? That's how we need to start valuing. You know, there is no one person that's perfect, but the person who acknowledge and recognize their mistakes, their wrongdoing, is ahead of other people. In this lesson, and later on we are going to see a little more about Israel, the leadership is not easy, and sometimes the leaders get tired, and they totally give up. How many times I personally have decided to quit? because I had it. Do you know that when you are a teacher, when you want to lead the people, and you want the people to understand you, and you, you don't want that they follow you. You want that they know what you are teaching and they follow what uh, the Creator, and follow God, they have a relationship with God. And then you see self-destructive behavior. And when you're trying to, to help, it is an attitude instead of accepting their own mistakes, they point the fingers to others. And they blame others for their own actions. And we are the only one responsible for what we have done. Moshe Rabenu needed to deal with his people, with his own sister and brother. He didn't hold them, but there needed to be consequences for their actions. Then, let me finish with this. It is time that we search in our own lives, and let's look back not because we enjoy it in the back, but uh, because we can say, we went through this, and because I went through this, now I can tell you what is better. God can use you for better things to all of us. You will be surprised how our Creator can use you in a wonderful thing, in spite of what you did or went through. And all of that can be used for good. Maybe what I, we intended for evil, God used it for good. That's what happened with Israel, because Israel, the first generation, was not able to go to the promised land. But the second generation had the opportunity to do it. They were free from all the things that were holding them back. Are you free 
or you're still holding back with your past? This simple question. Have you forgiven yourself? Have you forgiven yourself? Because sometimes when we are very hard with others, it's because we are not capable to forgive ourselves. As God has already forgiven you, who are you to hold that forgiveness? Have a wonderful day. Shabbat shalom.